So in this video, I'll be sharing my dramatic UK point of entry experience and also some tips to help some international students. Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jennifer and you're welcome to my channel. For it, all my returning subbies, thank you for stopping by to watch my video. And if you're new here, please give my video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe at the end of this video so i had a very dramatic point of entry experience so first of all we all know that from the applications to getting your unconditional offer or your conditional offer to your getting your cars visa application biometrics getting your visa all of these processes are nerve-wracking and the ultimate one the final one is the point of entry because of the stories you've heard of where the they send people back because they didn't have this document or they lied about something, you know, and the internet just spread a lot of false news and people just hold on to that fear. And when they get to the point of entry, because of fear, they begin to say things they are not meant to say and they complicate themselves. So first of all, I would advise that you be confident. There is nothing, there is nothing, um, difficult about the point of entry they are humans like you and after all you spend so much money to come to the uk it's not beans like you spent money so i advise that you be confident whenever you're whenever you're entering and don't mind all those things they say just come prepared first of all when you get to the point of entry the best first thing they're gonna ask you is okay can i have your cars so just get all your documents handy your cars your your offer letter your statement of account but don't show your statement of account all those documents your passport everything that um you know that they're going to ask you just get them together and put in your backpack or make sure they're in your hand luggage or somewhere very reachable so that when you get to the um the point of entry you give it to them okay so the first thing they will ask you is okay can i have your cars in my own case i didn't wait for them to ask me i just i already arranged my documents um on flight i put my my cars my conditional offer and my passport everything was together i didn't wait for the guy to ask for my cars i just got there and i handed over over to the officer because of, of course it's written even in your biometric letter the, your brop letter of course it's written that you should hand this over to the immigration officer when you get to the uk so i didn't wait for them to ask me i just handed it over to the guy and then the next question they'll ask you is okay what are you studying so it's advised that you know your don't fidget say what you're studying some of them might even be my my even want more details by asking you okay what are the models of your course so it's expected that you look at least the models of it because not like you're going to read them but at least know the model model heads like the model titles of your course so just in case they ask you you will answer them so after they ask you for all of that information some of them might just go ahead and stamp and say okay welcome to the uk and all of that or some of them might ask you do you have any plans for accommodation and um if you're if you're single most times it's easy to get accommodation from nigeria yeah so you can say okay i just booked an airbnb for myself or you're coming family i book for an airbnb for myself and my family and we are going to be staying there for some time until we get an accommodation and then some of them might go ahead to read your cars just like the immigration officer did this guy read my cars he st actually studied my cars like he was studying in fact when we got to Heathrow, i picked the 6 20 a.m um landing because i wanted to be the first like i wanted to be among the first set of people that were coming to uk i don't want in my own thinking i don't want anybody to annoy them and i get into uk late and they are already pissed and stuff and they already do you get me so i decided that okay i will come in early so when we got got to Heathrow, there was a long queue apparently it was not just my plane another plane from china and one other one from another asian country came in so the queue was long and it was gradually going gradually reducing and then all of a sudden one lady just came oh you're carrying babies because they give priorities to people with um children they said okay just move to the front so she took me to another booth um an Im immigration officer like i was the first person he attended to because the booth was empty until he came and the lady directed me to him so he took my cars i 
he, I didn't wait for him to ask. Like I said, I gave it to him. And this guy started studying my class. I stood there. I was just looking at him. And he was reading it. When he was reading, I knew that, okay, okay. I know this guy is going to be very detailed. Now, let me get prepared. So, I already... I was confident, I was calm. So he first of all asked me, I asked me my course, I answered him. He even asked me the modules I'll be studying. I just quickly said it. I knew he was going to take my time. So he now flipped and said, Oh, I see you paid only your deposit. Will you be paying the other amounts left? And I was like, Okay, I am meant to pay only my deposit first of all to get my cash and then after my visa application i pay my enrollment fee which i have already activated using the form a trade portal system in my country and he was like okay do you have any evidence for that i said no i do not have any evidence because it was done manually it's not about what i said to me i feel it's because i was confident and i was looking directly into his eyes answering him politely and calmly so he he in fact he knew that i was saying the truth so he was like okay he was still looking for something he was still looking for loopholes something to keep delay me and because my daughter was thirsty she was already disturbing me when we were in the queue she was crying i was coming her down okay don't worry we'll get water soon we'll get water soon so she now started disturbing again and from his body language, he didn't want to let us... He was looking for something else to ask me because he was not looking like... He didn't even take the stamp. He was still sitting relaxed. So my husband was now looked at him and said, Please, excuse me. Can we get water for my daughter? <laughs> so this guy now stood up from his boots and got water. When he gave us the water, he actually waited to see if my daughter was really... My daughter was really thirsty. Because she was truly thirsty, she was gulping the water like a truck pusher. So they were like, oh, I see, she's really thirsty. So that was when he now carried the stamp. Because she was, my kids were now, because of the wasting of time and all, he now carried the stamp. And that stamp and said, welcome to the UK. So I advise you, be calm, be polite, say your thank yous, say your please. And answer your questions confidently. If you're asked about accommodation, of course... If you've not gotten accommodation, it's expected that you've booked your Airbnb. You can book your Airbnb on hold. Most times, they don't even collect money on bookings.com. You book your Airbnb on hold, and you can show them that evidence for some of them that want to be very detailed, just in case they ask you, because they may not even ask. I know a lot of persons, my friend, that the guy, the lady, said, oh, I like your cab. Can I have it? That's just it. Welcome to the UK. And stamped. I know someone that said, oh, are you excited? Welcome to the UK. So, so many people, some, pe it doesn't, some persons don't even spend up to a minute. So, it just depends on who you meet and your fate. So, it's advised that you come prepared. Come armed. Don't think about all those stuff you hear that, oh, they send people back. They can't just send you back if everything is in order. No, they can't. Except there is a falsification of document of something. They can't just send you back. And then if you feel that your mind is not at rest or if it will make you feel any better, you can carry your statement of um, ac um account or your proof of fund for the one you use for your visa application. You can take that along, but don't show it until they ask you. And then I also advise people, the remaining amount of money you are meant to pay or the, the balance left, you can actually activate that on Form A and print it out as your proof that you've activated it but you've not been debited. That's if they ask you, you know, but don't show all these documents. Don't complicate things. Don't show all these I'm documents. Not, in my own time, I didn't hear of anybody they sent back. Nobody was sent back. We have a group and I didn't hear anything like that that they sent someone back. So remove that from your, delete that from your head. Yeah, it could be dramatic, but it all depends on how you handle the pressure and how you answer the um, questions. I don't want this video to be too long. So guys, this will be the end of this vlog and I hope I helped someone today. Please give my video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a video. So guys, I will see you in my next vlog. Bye.